stupid friends. You're the one acting crazy. I mean, like ten minutes ago you want to talk, now you forget it. Ten minutes ago I was trying to talk to you, but you were so caught up with your buddies, you forgot all about me. Always do that. I'm sorry, Ralph. I didn't mean to ignore you. What is it you want to talk about? I had a bad day at school and I just wanted to talk to you. Tell me about it. That stupid Laura and Bridget got me in trouble again. I hate them. They both sit behind me and they're always talking junk. So today I raised my hand and asked Ms. Johnson if I could move to the empty seat up front. But she gets an attitude with me and tells me not to raise my hand again. So of course Laura and Bridget start laughing and saying things like, Oh, the baby can't move up front. And then Laura starts to kick my chair. I tell her twice to stop and when she says, or I want, I jump up and say, or I'm going to slap both of you in the face. Ms. Johnson starts yelling at me about communicating threats and disrupting her classroom. She didn't even ask me what happened. She just sent me straight to the office. No, oh, that's messed up. I got three days in school suspension. Wow. My mom's going to flip. Maybe she won't. Yeah, right. She'll say something like, Jennifer, you've always been such a good straight-A student, but now you're in trouble every time I turn around. What happened? Well, if you were going to get in trouble anyway, why didn't you just slap in the eyes? <laughs> Chris. Do you at least feel better? Not really. I just want to make you feel better. What time does your mom get home? Are you Move, Chris. <laughs> Great. How long do you go stay mad at me this time? You get on my nerves. Well, if I get on your nerves too much, maybe I just ought to leave. Fine. Just fine. Each year, growing numbers of teenagers engage in self-injurious self behavior of cutting to rid themselves of their overwhelming feelings of pain and frustration. Tonight we want to shed some light on this very private and very dark subject in hopes that any first cut will also be the last. We want to grade our teens of this injurious behavior and help them to learn to get healing and help. Jennifer! Jennifer! I know you heard me calling you. Look at me. Why did I receive a phone call at work today from your assistant principal of all people telling me that you have three days in school suspension? It wasn't my fault, Mom. It wasn't your fault. Were you or were you not communicating a threat? It's not even the whole story. Were you or were you not communicating a threat? You're not even listening. Don't raise your voice at me. Were you communicating a threat or not? Yes, well, they're speaking at me, Mom. Jennifer, people get picked on every day. You are not the first. What is going on with you? You used to be such a good kid. I bragged to all of my friends about you. Now, you're just irritable all the time. You stay locked up in that room. You wear these same, oh, long sleeve shirts every day, even when it's hot. I thought it was some type of teenage phase you were going through, but I'm just going to ask you. Are you using drugs? No! Don't lie to me, Jennifer. I'm not on drugs. You know what? I'm not even going to talk to you about this right now because I'm, I'm upset. I'm going to the store. I will talk to you about this when I get back. Frustration, problems, being picked at, being bullied, all of these are things that can cause frustrations and pain for a young person. Having a parent that doesn't listen or that's not aware that they need to talk, these things create frustrations, pain, 
pain, depression, all of these things in young people, and can lead to a young person cutting. It is often that young people will have a day of a number of problems, going from failing a test, getting a, uh, having a friend become angry with them, pressure of completing their classes, a number of things that pile up on them. These feelings become so overwhelming <coughs> that cutting is the only way they find to relieve the pain. Let us look at Jennifer as she continues her story. because we tend to react in anger or what looks like anger when we're afraid that the child is hurting themselves or that they're going to kill themselves. It's very important that you don't react in fear and in anger, but become, uh, show your concern. Demonstrate a sense of caring and a, a, an attempt to find out what is happening. Why do you find this a necessary thing to do? And most of all, how can we get you some help so that you're not feeling this way? 